vertical 230 services, 231, 230.71, maximum number of disconnects. This was changed in the 2020 code, and in my opinion, this was easily, easily one of the biggest changes in the 2020 code. So we made some revisions here. You know, usually when we make a big change, three years later, we have to go back and do some cleanup work just to, you know, so if it's a big, you know, wide sweeping change, there's going to be little tiny things that, that were overlooked or things that just you know, maybe it said what we needed it to say, but we could say it better if we wordsmithed it a little bit. And, and that's what we have here, some clarifications made in 230.71. The rules for metering centers, transfer switches, motor control centers were clarified, and existing equipment is now addressed, which we desperately needed to do in Article 230. So 230.71. Maximum number of service disconnects. Unless allowed in 230.71b, each service must have a single disconnecting means. All right, now that flies in the face with what we've been doing for over a hundred years. The, the idea of having a service disconnect at the point of entrance to the building actually predates the National Electrical Code. The NEC has been around since 1897. Uh, if you look at the 1885 rules for the Fire Department of New York, it actually requires all the way back then that you have a way to shut off the utility conductors at the point where they enter the building. So having a service disconnect is obviously not a new idea. Limiting the number of actions to do it is also not a new concept. Now, in early, early versions of the code, we actually, I think we said it just needs to happen in a reasonable number. And of course, a reasonable what's reasonable to me might not be reasonable to somebody else. So I think it was around, uh, and I'm flying off the seat of my pants here, I think it was in the, in the 1930s, the early 30s, where we said, look, it's got to be six disconnects or less. And that was unchanged all the way up until the 2020 code when we said, listen, one service disconnect unless allowed in B. Now we're going to talk about B. B says two to six disconnects. Each service or each set of service entrance conductors allowed in 230.40 exceptions 1, 3, 4, or 5 can have up to six disconnects consisting of any combination of the following. All right, looking at this photograph here, this is one service. It's one service drop supplying one, two, three, four sets of service entrance conductors. That's permitted. If you go to 230.40, the general rule says, look, each service drop may only serve one set of service entrance conductors. One drop from the utility, one mast, one service disconnect, there you go. But 230.40 also says, eh, one drop can serve multiple sets of service conductors if you comply with some certain criteria. And here in the picture, we've complied with that. So each one of these, each set of service conductors can have up to six disconnects. So again, one service, one drop, one, two, three, four sets of service entrance conductors. So how many service disconnects could this building have? It could have 24, right? Up to six per set of service entrance conductors. There's one set, it can have up to six. This one can have up to six. That one can have up, right, you get it? So it's not just six per building, it's six per service or six per set of service entrance conductors permitted via the exception. As long as those two to six disconnects are in separate enclosures with a single service disconnect in each. All right, so this is probably the most common way of doing this. We come up here in this raceway with a service lateral conductor, with a service lateral. We tie it in here at the CT enclosure. This is probably what we would call the service point if you follow along in Article 100. And by the way, listen, I, I'm not going to pat myself on the back here or anything, but I think it's really worth your time to go to my 100 days of Article 100 series and, and watch the one on services. It is critical that you understand the definitions, okay? So a service, a service point, a service entrance conductor, a service disconnect, you have to know those definitions. I mean, that is critical. So we come up with a service lateral. We go to the CT enclosure, which might be the service point. Then we go through this wireway here with our service entrance conductors. And those service entrance conductors hit one, two, three, four, five, six separate disconnects in separate enclosures. 
that complies. You could also have two to six service disconnects if they're in panel boards, each of which has a single service disconnect in the enclosure. Now, if we're being honest, item two is already addressed in item one, right? Panel boards with a single service disconnect in each enclosure. Item one is what? Service enclosures with a single disconnect in the enclosure. So really item two is covered by item one, but for clarity, you know, just to avoid arguments, they, they've got it here. Now, here's the reason why this whole rule exists. It's, it's really shown in this picture here. These little yellow plastic guys. We talked about them in 215.15. Remember that? But here's the thing. If I have a single service disconnect like this in the enclosure, that means I can walk up to it, shut off the main breaker. Everything downstream of it is off. Everything upstream of it is insulated slash guarded. All right, so I can work on this panel board not only in, and comply with OSHA and 70E, but more importantly, I can work on it and be safe. Right? Forget OSHA and 70E and whoa, sounds like look, you, you need to be safe, right? You need to not be getting yourself killed and blown up. So this panel board complies with that requirement. If you had a panel board, I'm going to skip ahead a few slides here. If you had a panel board like this, don't read the words down here, but look at this. This is a, a panel board that has six service disconnects in the enclosure. You cannot work on this panel board legally without calling the utility. You can't. As soon as you take that dead front off, you are exposed to live parts that you cannot shut off. If you have to get on the phone, call the utility, have them come out and remove the meter. That's why this rule exists, is because we can't put electricians in the position where they're forced to call a utility to do something as small as changing a breaker, right? We need to be able to shut off the panel, change out a breaker, and turn it back on and, and not get the utility involved. So, I can have two to six disconnects, separate enclosures, separate panel boards with a main in each. Item three switchboards that have a single service disconnect in each vertical section and barriers that isolate the sections and provide protection from accidental contact and I reference 230.62c that's the barriers that we just talked about okay so I got my utility section here one two three four five six main breakers right and we're good to go each in their own vertical section with barriers that prevent me from opening up this right so when i open up this section shut off the breaker i should be able to open it up and not be exposed to a bunch of live parts that i can't de-energize okay so that's the idea with the switchboards you can also have and i'm just going to read it a little bit out of sequence you can have switch gear with service disconnects in individual compartments. Listen, switch gear is a very specific piece of equipment. I know when I was in the trade, and I won't lie, for the first probably 20 years of my career, I called everything that was big switch gear. Okay, I said, hey, that's switch gear. You know what that is? Switch gear. Hey, look at this, two pieces of switch gear. <laughs> None of those are switch gear. Switch gear is a very specific piece of equipment. Switch gear is something that you're only going to see in industrial or very large commercial. And the thing about switch gear is you have individual compartments, individual buckets for all of the different breakers and starters and all of that good stuff. Okay, so switch gear with service disconnects in individual compartments. You're not going to see a service disconnect that's part of switch gear very often. And if you do, guess what? You'll have individual compartments because that's part of what makes it switch gear is the individual buckets, okay? So forget switch gear for a minute. That, that's not that common. Transfer switches or meter centers with service disconnects in individual compartments. All right, so this would be a metering center. This probably does not comply. I don't want to say something that's inaccurate but I would be willing to put some money down and say this does not comply because here, these two service disconnects, they are not in separate compartments. Look at it. To open that up, you've got to take out these screws up here, these screws, these screws, and there's probably two more screws down there and then you take that whole thing off and guess what? You're exposed to both of those breakers and the uninsulated live bus bars that supply them. And that's the problem. Right, so if these were in individual buckets, individual compartments, that would be okay. 
Same thing with transfer switches. Transfer switches just weren't really discussed in 230.71b in the 2020, and quite frankly, it was probably overlooked. I mean, we're all humans, right? So transfer switches, you can get transfer switches that comply with 230.71 and the guarding requirements in 230.62c. Meter centers that have a service disconnect in each metering center. Okay, this thing complies. Now, as you can see, I, I didn't take this photograph. I got this one off, off the web, and I, I hate to do that. I like real pictures, but this would be compliant, right? You, you, if you come underground here with a service lateral, or you come overhead with a service drop, tie that thing in, and then you've got two complete separate, uh, separate metering centers, really. Uh, and that satisfies the rules, because again, the intent here is what? That you can get to the service disconnect, shut it off, and not be exposed to any live parts that you cannot de-energize. Well, over here, separate section. Over here, separate section. I like this piece of equipment. Motor control centers. Didn't really talk about these in the 2020 code. Motor, motor control centers, you don't see them used as a service disconnect very often, although you can. Now, I'm going to go on a little sidebar here and say, listen, if you use a motor control center as your service equipment, make sure it complies with 230.60. 230.60 says that your service disconnect has to be listed as suitable for use as service equipment. You're not going to find very many motor control centers that are listed as suitable for use as service equipment. So just a little FYI. Motor control centers with one disconnect in each MCC unit and a maximum of two disconnects in the MCC, as long as you have barriers that comply with 230.62c. So same concept here with the individual compartments, the individual buckets, right? Again, you want to be able to get to the service disconnect and not expose yourself to any live parts that you cannot de-energize. And again, we're, we're making very clear that 230.62 is what's driving this whole issue. The last thing we did in this section I love we have an exception to address existing installations. Now, we don't, you don't have to have an, an exception to every rule in the code that says, hey, listen, existing installations don't need to comply. Well, we know that, they're existing, right? And I mean, go back to 90.2c, right? 90.2c says the, the scope of the code is the installation of conductors and equipment. The code covers the stuff that you're installing if you're not installing something, then, then it remains compliant, right? But here's the problem. I've got this service equipment on the side of a house, okay? And this, this is very, very common in, in my part of the woods. It's a 400 amp uh, piece of equipment, very versatile piece of equipment. You've got two 150 amp or 200 amp circuit breakers here. One goes down to the basement, one goes upstairs. You've got two air conditioners out here, and then you've got provisions for like a detached garage in the future, and, and maybe even backfeed some solar on the other one. Do I have to go back and rip this thing out now? Of course not. But here's the question. What if I walk up to this, it's an existing installation, can I add a fifth and sixth circuit breaker? Wouldn't you be creating a violation if you did that? Because now you've added, right? So we had to make this uh, this exception to say, look, existing installations that complied with previous versions of the NEC can contain up to six disconnects in one enclosure or compartment. So this is not an exception saying that existing stuff can be left alone. That's already there, right? All existing stuff can be left alone. You don't have to retrofit anything. This is saying, look, if you already have three or four service disconnects, can you add the fifth and the sixth? The answer is yes, due to this exception. So nice job on the part of code making panel four here. All right, so there you go. There's 230.71, kind of a big deal.